Hello, orchid lovers. My name is Roland Cook. Uh, I'm an agricultural engineer. I'm 65 years old, and I own a small orchid nursery here in the state of São Paulo, Brazil. And we specialize here in cattleyas, as you can see. Well, a few years ago, I started publishing videos on YouTube, uh, trying to teach uh, people, beginners and experienced growers alike, uh, about uh, growing techniques, for, especially for cattleyas. Uh, these videos are in Portuguese, they are on a cha this channel that you're watching now, it's called Ogro das Orquídeas, which is the, ogre, or the orchid ogre, og the orchid ogre. Please, forgive my English, I've been, I lived in the States for almost 10 years, when I was a, a child. I've been out of the United States for more than 55 years. So my English is a bit rusty, but I'll try to do my best. Okay, so I started publishing these videos on YouTube a few years ago. I have 32,000 followers on this channel. Most people are located in Brazil, in Portugal, uh, in other Portuguese-speaking countries. However, in the last few months, uh, the number of people who have uh, seen the videos and people who speak English in English-speaking countries has grown quite a lot. So, and they have asked me to try to publish uh, videos in English because sometimes the translation feature on Google, on YouTube, isn't very good, it's not always available. So, I'll try to do my best to try to publish a series of videos mostly talking about cattleya culture here in Brazil, how we do things here in Brazil. Okay, as, we, as most people know, Brazil is cattleya land. Most uh, species of, of this genus uh, are native to Brazil. And of course, people are growing lots of other things here like phalaenopsis and sediums and, and, and other things. But Catlia still reigns supreme here in Brazil. Okay? So, from now on, every time I publish a video in Portuguese, I'll do a, a, a copy of this video in English for you people who may uh, appreciate some information on how we do things here in Brazil, how we fix our problems, how we water our plants, the kind of, of structure that we use to grow orchids, uh, fertilizing programs and pest control, the, everything we do, how we plant, how we kind of medium that we use for planting orchids, everything uh, about cattleyas here in Brazil. I'll be attending quite a few shows, orchid shows around in, in, in the country, and whenever possible, I'll try to make a video about that show as well. Okay, so the first video today, uh, I, I published a video a few weeks ago uh, talking about weed control and weed infestation in medium, small and weed, medium and large size orchid nurseries here in Brazil has become quite an issue, a big problem. Uh, it takes a lot of people to try to control that. You have to hire people. It's a lot of work. And sometimes it just doesn't work. Because you take the weed out by hand, and then after a few weeks, it comes back. So, uh, we developed a few other systems here. Uh, for most weeds, including uh, like this one, like grasses, like this one, and for a couple of other things like ferns and clover and other plants, we use, not everybody, if you have a small orchid collection, you know, 50, 60 plants, you can do it by hand. Just pull the things out. But if your orchid collection is larger or if you own a commercial,
commercial orchid nursery, then you can't do it by hand. It just, it's, it's, it's too much work. You have to uh, employ a lot of people. And so your cost is really, it goes up. So we use uh, weed killers. And the weed killer that we use most here, it's safe for use in orchids, is this one. This is Linoron. It's, this is Linoron 45%. It's safe for use on all orchids. I've, I've used this on, on lady slippers. I've used it on catleas. I've used it on phalaenopsis and on sedium. No damage to the plants. No problem at all. It's very safe for use on orchids. Of course, it is a pesticide. It's, it's poisonous. So you have to use it with all the normal precautions that you use using any agricultural chemical. Okay? So, this is a uh, line run at 45%. So what we do with this, we put, uh, we dilute it in 3 milliliters per liter of water and spray the plants, the whole orchid nursery. And it works pretty well after... Uh, Three, four weeks, you'll see that the, the weeds, most of the weeds, they, they just dry up and they, they take a long time to come back. Okay, so this is pretty good. The big problem that we're, we've been seeing in the last two or three years uh, is that we had an infestation of you know, uh, a small Australian uh, flower that it breeds in the orchid pots. It's got a very, it's got a difficult to pronounce name. It's Pseudanteratum variable or something like that. But in Australia, they call it the uh, orchid, the, the love flower. I'll show you. Here it is. See that? I don't know if the video is very good. My camera isn't very good, but you know, I'll try to improve that with time. It's got a very nice, very pretty flower. It's pretty nice. This is the worst weed we have here in Brazil. It came from Australia. Thank you guys from down under. That was fantastic. Well, and the problem with this, with this thing is that it grows very quickly. It spreads throughout the whole orchid place, and it's very hard to get rid of. Extremely difficult. Why? First of all, linerol doesn't kill it. So you can sp you'll spray your plants, it'll kill everything else. Grasses and ferns and, and clover, everything. Linerol will take care of everything. But it doesn't harm this little pesky plant from Australia. Sometimes if they get a little bit sad, it starts, stops growing for a few days, but then it comes back and starts growing again. And you can't get rid of it using liner. It's okay. So, the only way you can do it is by hand. So you guess you get the plant like this. You get it? And you sort of shake it. And sometimes it comes out with the roots, like this one. But most of the time, you pull it, and it breaks, like this. Ah, look at that. So the roots are still in here. You take it out. After about two weeks, it comes back. Stronger than ever. So the only uh, uh, effective way to get rid of this pulling it by hand is if you take the whole plant out of the pot you have to replant this whole thing and then you start you sort of you know you shake away the the growing medium and then you pull it out like that it comes out with the roots it's got a very extensive very strong root system it looks like some like a carrot look at that huge and then you can you can get rid of it like that but it, remember you have to take your plants out of the pot you have to repot your plants if you have two or three or ten or fifty plants 
that's easy. But you, if you have 2,000 plants, or 50,000 plants, or 100,000 plants, this is a real problem. This is, this is very difficult. You can't, you can't go around replanting your whole orchid uh, inventory every 12 months. So it becomes a real problem. So you have to replant this, put it in a new pot with new potting uh, medium, and then you'll get rid of it, hopefully, for a few months. Okay? So that's a big problem. Well, now comes creativity. Uh, as you can see behind me, uh, our watering system here in, the, in, in our orchid house, in this orchid house, is done by... Uh, sprayers. It's not an automatic system, but it's these sprayers are linked to a three horsepower pump. We turn it on, it wets the plants every once once a week. We do it by hand too to flush out the medium, but we wet the plants using this system. Well, a few months ago, while inspecting my plants, sometimes these sprayers they get clogged up with uh, whatever, dirt. And so they stop spraying and the plants go dry. So I was inspecting my plants a few months ago and I noticed that in a few places uh, the plants were dry, they, haven't, they hadn't uh, been watered correctly in the last month or so. And the plants, obviously, the plants suffered with this. It, they didn't like it, but it's, it was pretty easy to get them back. We just cleaned up the sprayer and watered the plants, and it, they came back pretty well. No problem. But I also noticed that this Australian love flower, should be called hate flower, it died. It just went away. So I... Made a, I, I ran an, a test here in, the, in the, uh, my orchid nursery. I selected 20 plants which were heavily infested with this, with this weed. Really infested. Really, you, even, you couldn't see the plant. You just saw the weeds. And we put them on a dry spell uh, for, it's now, today is March uh, 17th. 18th, and we stopped watering these plants three weeks ago. Gave them no water at all, cut it all off, and uh, we watch every week. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, these are the results. Uh, first of all, cattleyas don't like going without water, of course, but they will not die. They may suffer a bit, they'll lose, uh, the pseudobulbs will become, not shriveled, but they'll become, you know, uh, you'll see that the plant is losing water. Okay, this, this, this is, of course, this applies to cattleyas. Most of you people in the U.S., Australia, England, whatever, you grow phalaenopsis, and phalaenopsis don't, like going without water. So these uh, tips may not apply to you. If you grow phalaenopsis, you can, you, you can get a few plants and make your own test, see how long they can, stay, they can go without watering, and if you can gr get rid of the weed uh, before the plant starts suffering too much. Well, what happened with the cattleya? Let me show you. These plants were totally infested with the weed. I don't know if you can see this. I'll change the other side. I don't know. But if you can see it, all it's all dead. And it doesn't come back. You can start, the, the plants, of course, they lost water. You see that it's a bit shriveled, not too much. The plants really didn't suffer all that much. You, can, you shouldn't do this with bifoliate cattleyas because bifoliate cattleyas, once they shrivel the, the pseudobulbs, they won't plump up again. They won't get it, go up, return to the original state. But you can use it with junior folate cattleyas with no problem at all. Okay? 
just cut the water for two or three weeks. Most, most of the weeds will die before three weeks. This one, it was completely, all the weeds, all the weeds just died off. So you can resume watering this plant again, the same schedule that you use normally, and the weeds will not come back. Not, not in the, for at least six or seven months, because if another plant nearby spreads seeds, the seeds will fall here and it will start growing again. But then you can repeat the, 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 the treatment. You don't have to use any weed killer. No need for using toxic chemicals, nothing. We still use uh, linerone to control other things, mostly ferns. Ferns take a lot, long time to die when lack of water. So we use, still use it. But to control the Australian love flower, the best treatment you can do is just cut the water. Don't water your plants for two or three weeks. If there are cat, if there are cat leaves. Dendrobium is okay too, but not Phalaenopsis, not Lady Slippers. They, these plants, they can't go without water. So you'll have to do something else with those plants. But Catleas, you can easily do it. It will not harm your plants, and it takes care of that pesky little Australian love flower. Okay, that's our tip for today. Thank you for watching. I'll be publishing more videos in English, my rather rusty English, but I hope you like it. If you like it, uh, join our channel, press that little, but that little bell button there, so you get the new videos as, as they come out. And of course, if you like the video, just press the like button too, it'll help us a lot with YouTube. Okay. Thank you very much. As I said, my name is Roland Cook. I'm a professional orchid grower here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you and see you next video.